What is going on everyone, this is Drippy here, back with a Primal Brute build update, really more of a showcase and talking through the different options that are out there for the builds, as well as the upgrade path that I think is the most important, and I'll give you a hint, like on the thumbnail, it's not going to U3 first. Now, as with every builds video, I will mention I have a builds document in the YouTube description that is brought to you by all these channel members. If you want your name on here, you can click the link in the document or the join button below the YouTube video. And of course, all this stuff that I'm putting out here in the builds doc is 100% free. You just have to go down, find whatever ship you're looking for, click on it, and it jumps directly to those builds. Speaking of those builds, let's begin with my flagship brute, Primal Brute build. What you're noticing right here is that this is exactly the same as my three normal damage dealing ships. Now, the key things for this build here is that I do have the limited weapons on here. If you don't have those, just use the regular ones. They're horrendously expensive. And I'm about to stop getting them most of the time. I also have three of each armor, no big deal here. And damage fusion system two is of course nice. Uh, go ahead and scrap older ships that you're not using if you need a few more of those and you don't have any other methods. One important highlight is that I am using cluster warheads two for weight. And this is because cluster warheads three goes overweight and you shoot really fast anyway. Although it is nice to have that minimum reload. You're also noticing a D35 Siege Cannon S on here. This is for one low weight and two bonus combat speed. I decided putting a countermeasure or two on a non-countermeasure ship, meaning it's not boosted by countermeasure special, is actually going to hurt you pretty badly because you have four good countermeasures, but then like eight horrible ones. And those eight horrible ones are just going to take up the space and are going to actually tag the missiles as taken down. So it's not the way to go. I would not use countermeasures on your non-countermeasure ship. Now, you also have seen some people using different variations on this, maybe dropping a few more weapons and using something like the D-75B mortar that does add more speed, 7% per for, for mortar, which is true. Actually, I think it's 10%, but the problem with that V mortar is that you do increase your range, so it's impossible to auto with this ship, and I do like to auto some of the lower FM target in a few cases when it's possible. It's not always very nice, but I do like autoing at least the capability, the possibility to auto with this ship. Now I have one ship built like this, and then I'll bring the builds back document back pretty quickly. One ship built as the damage setup counting the flagship, so four total, and then one as a countermeasure ship right here, which does use a three MDS-3, one Gale, and then the specials are all similar, except you actually save enough weight to use Cluster Warheads 3. Now back to the game here, I do want to talk about upgrades very briefly and what I think is best. I do not think that the U3 upgrade is pretty much worth it at all. I think the U3 upgrade is really only good for the plus 40% explosive damage, and the rest is really like a cherry on top. It doesn't really matter. It's all boosting the built-in trauma mortar, which I think is a pretty bad uh, tool in the game. You have to stop for in order for it to be effective. It can have some use, but it's really not great. I don't think that the Trauma Mortar is worth it or is worth driving to use that. It's a nice bonus. I'll take it for free over nothing else, but I would not spend the most upgrade time for, in my opinion, the worst bonus out there. The exception is if you have tokens, which of course do it. So what I'm recommending is bring the flagship up to U2 first and then bring everything else up as you can. The first raid in the cycle, well, the one where you don't have the next ship, so the first time you're using whatever ship, skirmish, siege, assault, assault, etc. is a great time to upgrade the flagship and brutes in general because you're not using it and you probably don't have anything else to build. Just make sure you have enough uh, shipyard time free to use all your tokens, etc. Now, the only other thing I will mention about the brute right here is that it does have 1 million more armor points. You can see it's at 3.6 million compared to the other regular ships, which are over here. And yes, I do have the nice new skin at 2.6 million. Some people are making the brute a high evade ship because of the king killer mechanics in the target. I don't think that's worth it and you need to do some crazy builds to get it even close to being um, okay in terms of evade. I'm going to stick with the evade I'm at right here, which is actually fairly low at 60%. Although so much stuff is splash, these ships are going to get hammered anyway, even if they had over 100% evade. 
So that is my brute build update, my little flagship video right here. I'm doing ships up to U2, one ship to U2, second ship to U2, third ship to U2. Don't wait at U1, don't bring something to U3 unless you have tokens or everything else is done or both. With that said, I want to say thank you to all the folks whose names appear on screen now. All these people are helping make these videos possible. You want your name up there too, you can click the join button below the video. Anyways, and until next time, this is going to be Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.